welcome back to Still Waters ASMR. As you can tell, I'm currently sitting in my bed. I'm in my pyjamas still. It's quarter to four in the afternoon. I have no regrets. Well, no, I do. I spent all day doing tax paperwork. That is why I'm still in bed in my pyjamas at quarter to four in the afternoon. Um, I wanted to do a bit of a, an update video and kind of a bit of a kind of soft spoken ramble about island life and some of the realities of island life. Um, so here on the island that I live, so I live in the Shetland Islands, but I don't live on the mainland. So on the mainland of Shetland, there is one town that's got like the supermarkets and that kind of thing. And then there's some outer lying islands. I live on one of the outer lying islands with a population of about 900 people. Um, we've currently got an outbreak of uh, coronavirus up here. So it's been quite a worrying time the last little while. Um, reality of island life on um, Monday, Monday, I was, I was thinking Tuesday but no, it was on Monday then for, I left the island that I live on oh, apologies, I went down to the Shetland mainland for the first time this year the last time I was down was before Christmas and it was nerve-wracking because of the outbreak and so I was quite nervous um, there had been an outbreak on the island where I live and my husband had been around one of the people who tested positive so we were quite worried so we're basically having to assume that we were positive because it's one of those ones where you really have to assume you have it to protect those you care about. So for example I couldn't stop and visit anyone just in case and then you also have to assume that everyone else has it to keep yourself safe. So I'm immune suppressed and then my baby is only three months old so it was quite a stressful time. So anyway I had to make a trip down to the mainland to visit the supermarket because we've got a small local shop we've been getting most things from but there were some things I was needing to like bulk buy things like cat food laundry detergent because I use a particular brand of laundry detergent um, toilet paper when I say bulk buy I bought one packet of toilet paper but it was like 24 rolls um, I didn't buy like 5 packets um, what else yeah, but basically there was a variety of things that I wanted to to get. Um, so the supermarket has a click and collect service where you go online, you select your groceries, and then you select the time slot to go collect it from the supermarket. And that's what I was using. Unfortunately, you can only select 95 items that way. And I was trying to do quite a bulk shop and I was like right up against the 95 item limit like having to like pick and choose what items we wanted to buy previously I've placed an order in my name and then I've created an account for my husband and placed an order in his name and so I could get like double the number of items um, but I just I hadn't even thought about it this time apologies so we were restricted to just the 95 items so, normally, if I'm going down to the supermarket, um, so at the moment I have to book the ferry, I have to take a ferry to get from my island to the island where the supermarket is, so that has to be booked, and some, normally you can just turn up, but right now, because of coronavirus, you need to book, and normally I would like pop along and see my in-laws or see my parents while on the island on the mainland but because of this whole coronavirus situation I couldn't stop anywhere 
and when you go to do the click and collect you pull, you pull up in your car outside the grocery store and they bring everything out in like boxes and like leave it behind your car and then you load it into your car yourself. I would have liked to have used the bathroom but I didn't even want to go into the shop even to go use the bathroom. So bearing in mind I've got a three month old baby it was a stressful day so basically I had to be in the car ready to leave my house at 11 o'clock in the morning. I was then on the 11.30 ferry. I then, um, it's like a 15, 20 minute ferry ride and then by the time I got into the town it was half 12. Got my groceries, got them loaded into the car, um, was leaving the town by about 1 o'clock managed to get to the ferry terminal in time to catch the 5 to 2 ferry back to the island of Yell and I was home by about half two. Thankfully I managed to hold in that entire time without going to the toilet. I was very happy. I couldn't have done that while pregnant because I was constantly needing to pee. Um, and thankfully my baby slept the entire time. So I fed her before we left at like half ten and then when we got in again at half two and thankfully she coped that length of time without getting even fed um, and she just slept all day like all the time and I was like thank you um, of course as soon as we were about to leave the house we had to leave at a certain time because we had a ferry to catch she, she made a sound that sounded like she'd filled her nappy and I was like no so I went and on the ferry on the way down I like climbed into the back seat and tried to change her nappy on the back seat. Turned out she hadn't filled her nappy at all, she'd obviously done a fart. And so I didn't need to change her nappy but anyway, there was me changing her nappy on the back seat. <laughs> I had her like on the seat beside me and I like picked up her picked up one of her legs to like, you know, clean her up and not that she really needed cleaning but like to change her nappy. When I picked her leg up I like tipped her head first off the back seat so she was like hanging down into the footwell and I was just like holding her by a back leg <laughs> well a leg um she's not a dog um I'm like holding her by her leg and she's like hanging head first in the footwell and I'm like oh no so I like pull her out the footwell and she just like smiled up at me and laughed and I was like oh. thankfully I have the most laid back baby I am so grateful I was I, I felt terrible I was like I just dumped my baby in the footwell like head first hanging her in there and she just thought it was funny I was like oh man like mummy is accident prone thankfully like, baby is like very laid back and chilled out about it so uh oh and I uh, so apologies about the yawning it's as soon as I start recording I just need to yawn um as well as it being stressful because of coronavirus and needing to get down and back in the set time I also it was snowy and icy so getting out of our drive the main roads weren't too bad but getting out of our drive and from our like drive to the main road it's like a single track but it's a really narrow single track road with like passing places it's like literally wide enough to get your car down with like ditches on either side and it was just icy and it was terrifying um and then on the way back when I was pulling into our drive it was just a sheet of ice because it had been raining by that point on the ice but it was just slippy and I almost crashed the car into my neighbour's garage it was like I had to kind of pull forward and then back down into our drive and I pulled forward and like the front end of the car just swung around like it was heading straight for his shed it was very stressful so I was preparing to go out it was stressful like I was stressing about it for like days beforehand and then like I'm still kind of recovering from it now but I mean the good thing is it all went smoothly I don't have to leave the island again for at least another month if not more um because we can get kind of like your bread and milk and like 
normal stuff just from the little, you know, the local shop. So, won't be going out again anytime soon. Um, so yeah, island life for you. It's uh, very different. It wasn't that long, so, you know, it's, that's like a four hour or three and a half hour round trip just to go to the grocery store to do a click and collect. Where I used to live, the, the grocery store was like a 10, 15 minute drive away. Now it's like a 15, 20 minute ferry plus about an hour's drive. So a very, very different kind of world that I live in now. So yeah, life is different now. We've also been having issues like another aspect of island life. So if you live on the mainland of the UK, you can order anything online and it arrives pretty easily. We were trying to get a fridge freezer, um, trying to buy a new fridge freezer for the kitchen. So my husband is renovating our kitchen. I've been watching so many kitchen organising videos and I want to get back in the kitchen. But I just can't get in there at the moment because it's a building site. Uh, my husband's been busy doing like plastering the walls and... Um, putting up plasterboard and taping and filling and he still needs to do some more sanding before he can paint and then he needs to install the radiator and get the fridge freezer in there so the we were wanting to get or order like a big fridge freezer for in the kitchen at the moment we've got like one small under the counter fridge in the kitchen and then one small under the counter fridge in the utility room to get a really big fridge freezer to go in the kitchen which would be wonderful but we were trying to order one online because there's only one sh one store in Shetland that you can buy that kind of thing from and like the cheapest one was about £1,200 and we're like we don't want to spend that much so we were looking online and like no one was going to deliver to us here we went on to several websites and they said, oh yeah, we deliver. We went through, placed the order, and then they emailed us and went, um, actually, no, we don't. Because obviously they'd, they'd see, they had gone, looked at the postcode, seen where we live, and were like, mm, no, we can't deliver to you. Because of course anything coming up from the mainland of the UK needs to come up on a ferry up to Shetland. And then go on a truck from the ferry terminal up to us via another ferry and like no mainland courier companies come up here so your DHL, your UPS, your FedEx, any of these kind of like main um, couriers, your yodels or anybody else they don't come up here to Shetland so they basically have to hand over the item to a Shetland based courier and that like adds so much more money on that they just don't do it and the cost of bringing it up here on the ferry so they just don't do it so many companies just don't do it the alternative was we could have it delivered to like a depot in Aberdeen where a Shetland courier would then take it from there up but they were going to add like £100 onto the delivery cost so in the end we managed to get one off Amazon and they've actually delivered and when we placed the order we were it was like a third one we'd ordered and we were just waiting for them to email us and go no we don't deliver but it turned up it was like took longer to turn up than it should have because i think it sat in the back of someone's van for a while but it turned up at my husband's work so that's another example it had our address on it but it went to my husband's work because the delivery driver knew who my husband is and where he works and he just delivered it to his work instead of here which is actually useful because it's not we're not ready for it to go in the kitchen yet so it's going to stay at my husband's work until we're ready for it in the kitchen so we've got a new fridge we finally managed to get a new fridge freezer but that's just island life it's so difficult getting stuff um that's the one thing i'm finding frustrating with lockdown is trying to get a hold of things like there's, there's projects I want to do in the house like tidying and organising there's some certain items that I've been needing to get a hold of and I can't just go to a store and browse and buy items because 
I'm not supposed to be worrying about right now because of Covid and ordering things online it takes forever to get here at the moment because of again because of Covid's affecting the postal system or you just can't you find the item and then it, they're like not going to deliver and you're like just give me the item or they're going to add like I was the other day I was looking to order something I've been trying to boycott Amazon the other day I was looking for something it was like it was going to cost something like six pounds and I found it on a website and I went to order it and they told me it was going to be like £12 to deliver it to me and I'm like, I can't justify the delivery being twice the cost of the item so I didn't get it, I, well I ordered it on Amazon instead um, with a few other items and got free delivery so you're kind of like, oh, it's it sucks, I'm trying to boycott Amazon um, Jeff, Jeff Bezos, whatever his name is, is like rich enough, he doesn't need any more of my money but at least I use the Amazon smile, so you end up donating to charity. That's like the one redeeming feature. Um, I'm trying to think of any other, other kind of updates. Um, oh, in my last Croft uh, uh, video, then you saw Tex, our elderly Ram, and I mentioned how he probably wouldn't be around for much longer because he's a really old man. Sadly, he passed away um, a week or so ago. It was literally like a few days after I did the video, he passed away. But that was like the ideal. He was an old man and like the options were we either let him live out his days and just die naturally or like we sort of took him out. And I'm glad we like convinced my husband just to let him live out his days naturally. He was a happy little guy. He was just—I loved him to bits. I really miss him. Um, but yeah, he had a good life. Uh, I was out checking the sheets the other day, and I was looking at all the bums of the because he had the, the paint on his chest. To, so when you covered all the ears, you could tell which ones um, he bred with. And I was looking at all the all the bums, thinking all the offspring he was going to produce, and then I noticed that our young ram also had a coloured bum, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so a little bit of confusion happening there, I think. Um, but I was like, oh well. So that amused me. So yeah, that was a bit of sad news. Usually, apologies again to Yonan. My baby's sleeping, snoring away from Apple, her little self. She's fairly coming out, it's really lovely. Um, I do have a heap of videos I'm wanting to do, but like this last week's been a bit hectic, so I've not really managed to get any done. Um, oh, yes, so. Back in March 2020, I was supposed to renounce my US citizenship. I had the appointment booked with the US consulate in Edinburgh. Um, my flights booked, I was going to go. And then that very week, the UK went into lockdown. All the flights got cancelled. The US consulate shut. It was like, nope, not happening. So I was like, okay, stop being a US citizen for a bit longer. Then of course the COVID, there's all these economic impact payments being made to all US citizens. I am a US citizen, so I got the payments, which was just like, I've never paid, like I have to do my taxes every year, like the paperwork, but I've never paid any taxes in America. But because I'm a US citizen, I'm eligible to get these checks. But my name was all out of date with their system, so when they sent me the check, it's my maiden name which I couldn't cash it because like my bank account was now my new married name and they were like no you didn't you must match the name on the account so I had to send it back to the to the IRS and be like can you please send me a new check with the right name so we finally I had to do a whole bunch of paperwork and it was all very complicated we finally got my name correct with my social security number and the IRS and everything so everything was all correct 
and then I phoned them uh, yesterday and they assured me that it's all been updated properly. I've actually got a cheque for $600 currently on its way to me in the post. When I file my US tax paperwork for 2020, I'll get the the cheque I had to send back because it was wrong. I'll get that payment made again in the correct name, which was $1,200. And then there's some rumours that when Congress reconvenes, that Biden's going to issue another payment for $1,400. And I'm like, this is brilliant. It's It might actually cover the cost of me renouncing my citizenship. <laughs> because it was going to be like several thousand dollars to renounce my citizenship. So that's pretty sweet if basically America pays me the money which I can then turn around to give back to them to be like, can I renounce my citizenship? That would be pretty sweet. Um, cause I think I will still renounce my citizenship because doing the paperwork every year to tell the US government that I don't owe anything is just a pain. It's like, I don't owe you anything, so why do I have to keep doing this? But if you earn over $10,000 anywhere in the world, you have to tell the US government. $10,000 really isn't very much. I mean, I only work part-time and I still earn more than that. Oh, that's my husband home now, I think. So I'm going to stop recording and I'll catch you again later. Bye-bye.